Uh, today we're going to be starting a series, uh, a series on storytelling. Uh, we are on set today in Ipara Remo. Uh, if you're watching this show, you're obviously old enough to know uh, that storytelling is one of those uh, cultural ways by which knowledge transfer happens. Uh, it's, it's, um, we, we all grew up uh, knowing about folklore, uh, stories from our fathers, uh, from our mothers, from generation uh, to generation. So it's just one of those cultural ways by which we transfer knowledge. Uh, my guest is no other uh, than the consummate storyteller himself, who is also a folk singer, if, uh, you know, and a dramatist by excellence, who indeed wowed us in our own growing up years. Uh, and when I begin to mention some of it now, children programs such as Storyland on NTA, I'm sure you already know who I'm talking about, the family scene on LTV8, which is the Lagos television, and indeed the last but not the least, I think that was the last, uh, which was the African stories on the African independent television, AIT, uh, just to mention a few. But without much further ado, I want to bring on set uh, our daddy, uh, Nigeria's daddy, Africa's daddy, uh, is our daddy because he was our storyteller uh, growing up. He's no other person other than Babagba, Jimmy Sholanke. Welcome, sir. Thank you. And I also want to say thank you for welcoming us to Ibudo Asha. So tell us about that name, Sholanke, sir. And by, because I want you to, I had mentioned to uh, the, our viewers at the introduction that uh, our engagement is going to be more of storytelling. I come from a compound they call Ileedu. It's a compound where majority of the show, 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 you know, that compound, the uh, majority of the families there came with the show, show, the show prefixes yes. to, their, names. to their names. My father won my, my church choir attendance because I was a singer at the Holy Trinity Church in Buteiro. Wow. That means you must know how to sing a lot of Yoruba hymns. Um, Yoruba and English. Yes. Nearer my God to thee. <laughs> Nearer to, to thee. thee. What's your favorite Yoruba hymn, sir? Ah. Hey, my favorite Yoruba hymn. Even while I was in school, I was already composing songs. I was in Odogolu when I composed some songs that uh, Roy Chicago and his Abalabi downbeats recorded. I was enjoying it, but uh, my parents didn't like it. Then when they started hearing Jimmy Sholanke, Ore Titan, Ore O Titan, Kusi Laimo, Ore Titan, they recorded, Wangwe Ye, Loni Le Goguru, Wangwe Ye, Bi Bi Ogo. They recorded it. I wrote all those songs. And this, you were still in secondary school at that time? Yes. All that went on until uh, I left secondary school and my daddy says, no, 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 I'm not going to be a normal nigga at all. He contacted my uncle, yeah. organized my being employed at the then Caxton Press as a press assistant press engineer. Mm. My interest in going out at night to sing overtook my interest in going to Caxton Press. So I stopped going to work. Eventually, my uncle sent me out of his uh, boys' quarters. Well, and that gave me the freedom that I was waiting for all the time. 61, 62. That in my just moving around, I ran into somebody who told me about Mbari Club. And in the Mbari Club, they used to hold a lot of uh, theatrical uh, presentations. Mm. They even invite groups like uh, Ogumola, 
to come and perform there. That's where theater started uh, its appeal on me. Mm. Not too far from then came the, uh, uh, the advertisement for School of Drama, University of uh, Ibado. And uh, we are all advised to, you know, uh, apply. apply. Then they accepted us as first students to go into any uh, thespian uh, study. I got so interested that, that I became one of the finest actors ever wow. in that team. And I was very busy because I assistant director to Olarutini. Mm. Drama, assistant director to Peggy Harper, dance, assistant director to Nate Akeyuba, music. I mean, this is being very, very rich, and I see the multi talent, multi skill. Uh, because not only were you, I mean, the creative art is wide, but you focus, you've, you've got across all music, theater, uh, dance. you know, dance. <laughs> so how um i'm going to come into where did your love for uh jazz music where did it come from Welcome to Ibudo Asha. Ibudo Asha is my place where I want all cultural occasions and events to be taking place. And more so in my hometown, Ikbararemo. The Yoruba man says, Ileni Abosimioko. Especially right now, I am welcoming, uh, <laughs> we've known each other, you know, but today we are coming like to face, face to face to talk to each other, to appreciate each other. Afolabi, that's his first name. <laughs> his other name. <clears throat> I've been with this name since the Western region. I was much, much younger in the Western region in those days. And if you were there too, you know the Imokwe days, the Obi Baba himself and, and, and Auntie. Uh, well, we can't have an we can have all our aged or an aged man forever and ever. But today, Olabi and I are just walking around the gallery in Ibuduasha. You're welcome. Thank you Come very much. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody watching, Olabi, uh, Olabi, and you're welcome. You see, uh, Ibuduasha is a project I I had concept for three years ago, and I've been working on it, you know, especially when we were quarantined, I was quarantined here. Wow. <laughs> so a good way to quarantine. <laughs> yes. I was quarantined here. And that's when these, uh, that was last year, that was when all these plays, all these uh, settings you are going to go through, 
That's when we were able to set them up. Wow. Uh, because uh, the, anything that is cultural are to me very fine, very nice, very real, very total. Please, let's go. <coughs> you see, I had interest in doing some collage artworks because I wanted to teach it to, I wanted to teach it to children on the television. And I sat down and created it, making artworks out of the uh, colors of newspapers. So the first ones I came up with, I showed it to my yoga, Professor Wally Jink. I said, ah, you did this? I said, yes, sir. And I brought some of them to you. And I said, uh, excuse me, when I wanted to leave, I said, ah, okay, can I go and frame them for you? He said, mm -mm 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 -mm, leave them there. Because by the time you are on the staircase going down, you would have uh, shared it all. So we have about 3,000 copies of this artworks because I don't sell them. They are here. So but this, sorry, sir, I was just, Curious. So, so when was this first experience with Professor Wole Shrinka on this collage? Yes, uh, that hotel, uh, that hotel at Lekki, that big hotel. Uh, Oriental? Oriental. Hmm. He was lodging there then. So I brought the artworks and took them to him. He said, ah, 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 very good, very good. Ah, ah, ah. And then he gave me a beer. And as I said, ah, okay, I'm mulo check loba yi frame. He said, mm, 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 leave them there. <laughs> because he will get them out before he will <laughs> get down from the steps. So they are here. They are the ones we have used to, to decorate this, uh, mm. gallery here. What's the inspiration beyond, behind some of this? So, I mean, you, I know it's for the kids, uh, but. But now, uh, since I stopped the program for the kids, uh, what I went on doing was to get better in it, get better, mm. uh, do it better, create better artworks. Mm. And when that started happening, I fell in love with it. Anytime I didn't have anything to do, I would just go on my art table and start working on them. And that's why there are this plenty. Because I don't want to compete with the, the with the genuine, the true artist, uh, selling my artworks. No, 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 no. I just let them in the home collection, and that's how we can have enough of yeah. them to exhibit in this uh, gallery here. <laughs> we have not even moved our books for Mife, <laughs> but uh, two movements have brought us this. One big movement with a boss will bring the remaining when the shelves are ready. And uh, that we probably be like ten more shelves. Or yes, like yes. <laughs> <laughs> we, look, uh, Onyeka sent me a biography. Bi bi uh, you sent us. <laughs> <laughs> that beautiful book we're yeah. still reading today. <laughs> and so that's how it grows. Plus the ones we have still in the fair. And we will have a big library around here because I want everything to be happening in this place. Uh, when people ask me at 79, why are you just starting this? I said, yes, that's the best time to start anything you want to start mm -hmm. because you will have enough time for it. And you, and I'm telling everybody, do not be afraid of starting a new project at whatever age. Mm. It might even be the one that will uh, rejuve rejuvenate you. you, and keep you here a lot because more. once you have your mind on something, your, 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 your everything is working. You remember you put this there. You remember you did this. You remember you want to do this. You, so that's what I'm doing with it. So your adrenaline keeps pumping. It, 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 it does. Oh. So we brought some of these uh, artworks back here, one way, all of them. Some of them have been with us in Ife for over decades, mm. decades. Even some of them have had problems with our children. 
when they were growing up. Mm. Because our children in those days thought any one of these was in the house to seek for care and food and all that. They would push them. <laughs> 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 they would come here and compete with me. They put them. So since they have uh, uh, come across without breaking their necks, so we brought them here. They survived. <laughs> we brought them here. So, um, we'll be having a lot of things to do here. So these collections, this, uh, so are they primarily Nigerian or you've also collected from across? Uh, yes, countries? there are a few of them from Ghana. Mm. There are a few of them from Ghana. And one of my friends gave me one from a, a Senegal. Mm. That's all. We have just uh, been telling everybody that are calling all these kind of things uh, juju mm. to please send them to us. To us, they are no juju. They are materials of respect, uh, materials of, of appreciation, materials of decoration, mm. materials of total, you know, that must have total presences in our homes. Because when, when I traveled to Germany, I saw a lot of uh, my German friends who, who, when you look into their houses, you will see that they loved our art mm. so much. When you look into their houses on top, on top, on the ground, on their Dreams. tables, you yeah. know, yes. And I'm wondering, I'm, we who own them, we who have them, we who should be proud of them. We who should, people should be jealous of us when they come into our homes. Ah, you have, you have this thing too. Ah, what are you doing with them? Ah, this is nice. We discard them. If you want to discard any, just bring it to you. <laughs> <laughs> just bring them. There's enough space for them. This is the workbench. Hmm. This is the workbench. Ah, you see? I don't even know how it happened. <laughs> <laughs> Do I know that face? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think I recognize the person now. <laughs> I've enjoyed reading it and I'm going to be glad reading oh, it. We'll out. talk about that soon. Uh, Thank you so much. Yes. Today we're going to be starting a series on storytelling. Storytelling is one of those uh, cultural ways by which knowledge transfer happens. We are on set today in Ipara Remo. I want to bring on set Babagba Jimmy Sholanke. My interest in going out at night to sing overtook my interest in going to casting press and continue the apprenticeship of a printing press engineer. One way, I recorded it. I wrote all those songs. And this, you are still in secondary school at that time? Yes. Please join me on YouTube every Thursday at 6 p.m. West African time for another exciting and engaging episode of the Never and Afterthought show. And so, so, the, so what's the history of this workbench? What is the, the workbench, we were using this, uh, this particular wood. Mm. Uh, they use it around here for ceiling, for everything. Even if it was, uh, deep in the ground, when it's, uh, fresh, it will grow again mm. and re, re, replant itself. So when we finished doing some job and there were lots of them, Cut a ways. Then my carpenter and I just started thinking, ah, ah. <coughs> let's make a table out of this. And quack, 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 quack. We were able to do two because of the leftover. And then we went to the sawmill mm. and, yeah, and the free of charge. I see the same complimentary chair. Oh, yes. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> Uh, those are chairs that will last forever and ever. <laughs> <laughs> so did you have to treat the wood? 
to avoid um, rodents no, the, and yeah. these particular type of wood, koso mm. and all that, they have that uh, genuine anti anti worms. Uh, uh, they will be there forever and ever. So they've got no moisture in it, obviously. No, 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 no. That's why foreigners. Uh, those who are coming to buy them at very expensive prices, mm. Koso and its type. But the Koso is the name given to, uh, wood like that. Mm. And the merchants are just down the road in my yes. town there. Oh, wow. They will just get there. They give it to you free of charge. You don't even have, even that's part of it. The one that is carrying the, the this one carrying this one. Yeah, that's the show. Yeah. It's just son of design. They wanted to throw it away, or they've even thrown it away. Yeah. <coughs> this, you know, is an art piece on its own. Yeah. Yeah. So I just got it. I said, eh, 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 don't throw it away. Some people would have used it to make charcoal. Hmm. <laughs> I said, no, 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 you're coming home with me. So what do they do with this wood in the community? With this, with the, this yeah, leftover? So, yeah, the leftovers, like after they've done it for roofing, they just throw it away? Once they have cut off the ones that are going to be exported, mm. the, remainder became, the remainder becomes become the, uh, materials for making charcoal. Charcoal. <laughs> because they say, huh, what's my concern with you? A bag of charcoal is uh, 1,700. So what do you want to pay? A whole uh, capsa is about 26,000. And from there, they can make uh, charcoal, what, about 50, 40, 50,000. But we who are begging for the wood, they will say, okay, okay, just go and pick and then go quickly and go. Mm. So, uh, around here, I have people, they give me, they just, they just come and drop it. If you look around, yeah. they're everywhere because they are artistic in their in nature. nature and all that. And they are patterned already. <clears throat> and uh, this particular lamp is very special. Is the storytelling lamp? So, how did you come about this? Sir? We went to a studio one day, recorded it. A friend of mine. And I, we wanted to sell a storytelling lamp, lamp shades hmm. for children's rooms. So we made it. We didn't have too many people buying it. Maybe we, we we are too expensive, but we're trying to make sure that we find it to be uh, uh, to be to be mass produced and become cheaper. So that's about two hours of storytelling in that. So this. So this product hasn't gone to market yet? No. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, uh, storytelling lamp for children's bedrooms. That's, well, that's a patent that <laughs> you should still work on, sir. Yeah, we're working on it. Because I've never, I mean, and look at the, uh, just even looking, looking at the image, that's a child sleeping. Yes. Reading a book, actually, literally sleeping off reading a book, you know, wow. Well, Pablo will talk about this uh, off, <laughs> off camera. <laughs> and so we have this bench here for students, for even elders, because there are a lot of uh, programs, there are a lot of uh, magazines, current ones, a lot of uh, materials mm. for you to look through and uh, be educated about one thing or the other. <coughs> the children coming here 
for a drama workshop. Mm. They love sitting here a lot because they will go through all the magazines, all this. But you can't take it home more because when you take it home, you might not even be yeah, back with it. Bring it back here. Yeah. Or even bring it back as if uh, it's been with you for nearly 10, 10 years. Our topic today that we're discussing is from agriculture to agribusiness. The case of an African youth. Beyond making agriculture sexy, we have to make it executive. Hmm. I enjoy people calling me a fisherman now than calling me a graduate. You chose to focus on crayfish. Why the crayfish? It is because of the challenge in processing the crayfish. I want to face the challenge so that people can enjoy it. I will use that to add value. And once I add value, definitely I will make words. When agri remains as a culture, you are the sustenance level of farming. If we do agree, the agribusiness is the oxygen for African economy, then it cannot remain at the cultural level. Please join me on YouTube every Thursday at 6 p.m. West African time for another exciting and engaging episode of the Never and Afterthought show. So we are, we are, uh, we are a drum collecting center here. Mm. These are the recent ones that we've collected. Uh, they are Akwekwe drums. Akwekwe drums are for some special kind of uh, masquerades that uh, is dressed neatly, you know, like a woman and dances, you know, mm. very gracefully. These are the drums used in entertaining mm. it to dance. And those are the, you know, butter. Yes. Those are the Jebu batas. Mm. Those drums are especially the bata drums for the masquerades of. Uh, so, so sir, these these um, particular drums for these masquerades is it is it the Jebu culture? Is it? Yes, uh, it is. It is. Okay. Akwekwe is basically ours. Okay, it's uh, the para. Okay. No, remo. Remo. Okay. Remo in general. Okay. Remo in general. So are there special days when they come out? Is it when you're uh, starting the Akaribo mm, or how does it No, is? you know, if you come from the family of uh, uh, one of the maskers' uh, family, if you have anything to do, the wedding of your daughter, mm. the, the celebration of any of your boys, these masquerades will come out. Mm. The drums come in three. One, Yalu, one Omeleabo, one Omeleako. They come in sets of three. Sets of three, oh, okay. Yes. So, oh, okay. So this is... Igme. Igme. This is one of the oldest around. And just like we were saying, somebody brought it to a friend of mine, a collector. And that one is saying, yeah. I don't have a space in this place for this kind of thing anymore. Can I take it? He said, yeah. You want it? I said, yeah, I want it. What can I pay for it? Just take it. Just take it. Hmm. So, he's been here enjoying himself. <laughs> Those are the Ijebu Bata. Hmm. Hmm. I like this carving in my house because the carver used to be my friend, mm. much younger. But now, like the Yoruba man says, Otifi ku shekbo milo. Exactly. Badi passed on about eight, nine years ago. And nobody can forget somebody who, who created this and a lot more. Mm. But it was a fine cover. But somehow, pneumonia. Wow. Pneumonia. He, he lived in a house that is, the, even the house was tilting into, <laughs> into shifting and, and falling off. So, but they, the, so it's a pair. I see. Yeah, it's a pair. 
Y de pe. Y de pe. Mm. The day I, the remain, the remaining works are in Ife. Okay. These ones, my son-in-law assisted me in retrieving it. I took it to a film location. Mm. I loaned it out to them to use, you know, like we place them. And when they finished that film, I didn't go back and they didn't even they bring it, it to back. me. For years. Wow. So I started calling I said, look, 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 look. Check into your storeroom ship. Finally when he said, ah, Motirio. I think I was singing, the falling leaves drift past my window, the autumn leaves of red and gold. I see those smiles, those summer kisses, those sunburned hands I used to hold. Since you went away, the days grow longer and longer, my dear, and the soon I'll hear the willow sigh. Even in this town now, a lot of people are already calling me Babagba. They've been calling me Babagba nearly 20 years ago. Even when I when was not there. Yeah, was no, no, nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> They've been calling me Babagba nearly uh, 20 years ago. The reason was I wrote a song, and the title of the song was Babagba. And the song came out, and people loved it. And so everywhere I stepped into, they were calling me Babagba, Babagba, Erulong Bamio, Nitori Omoke Kerekon, Tolong Fesho Komi, Koje Durosileu, Durosile, Kofara Momi, Jojumo, Jojumo, Londedo, Londegbe, Koje Durosileu.